Corn was a very important crop to the Iroquois people. As a nutritional staple, corn was a member of the three sisters. The other two sisters were beans and squash. As long as you had the three sisters, you and your family were not going to starve when you had to endure long, harsh winters or when game was not as plentiful. It was such a valued commodity before European contact that it was used as a barter currency throughout the Northeast. There are many types of corn, and it is the Iroquois white corn that I'm going to showcase. Iroquois white corn is harvested and allowed to dry. The process allows the corn to be preserved for an extended period of time. Traditionally, white corn was also used to make cornbread, corn pudding, corn syrup, succotash, and corn soup. In present-day Iroquois native life, corn soup is considered a delicacy. Not so much because of its simple ingredients, corn, kidney beans, and salt pork, but it is because of its very complex preparation. The most time-consuming process is removing the unedible hull from each kernel of corn. In order to facilitate in the removal, the corn must be boiled in a mixture of wood ash and water. It is not uncommon to take up to 10 hours to prepare the soup. I was 15 years old when my aunt taught me how to clean corn, and I seemed to have found my culinary calling. I was able to quickly master this recipe, and soon I was making soup for my family for special occasions like Thanksgiving, weddings, and graduation parties. I was also able to use this newly found skill to benefit me financially. When times were hard, my mom and I used to make a pot of corn soup, and we would sell it door to door. And believe me, if someone knew you made good corn soup, they would be willing to pay three or four dollars a quart. It is with honor that I'm able to present this corn soup presentation. The process and recipe are the same ones used by my Iroquois ancestors, and I'd like to think that they would be proud that their old ways will not be forgotten. And who knows, maybe this presentation will teach our future generations how to make this delicious, traditional Iroquois corn soup. This is the wood ash. There are people on the reservation that still heat their homes with wood stoves. And rather than discard the ashes, we use the ashes to help with this hull removing process. And if you notice here, you see bits of charred wood and some unburned wood. Now to start off, I used a quart and a half of uh, dry corn. And I put that into a pot. Next thing I'll do is uh, use equal parts of ashes. So I'm going to use a quart and a half of ashes. And because there's a, some still wood residue left, um, unburned wood, uh, required to sift it. It's a lot like sifting flour. You just shake it and whatever's left over you throw out. Once you've sifted all the ashes, now it's time to put in water. It's very important when you put in the water because it has to be the right consistency when it boils. Actually, there's a trick to cleaning the corn. You actually need to make sure that the consistency of the water is just right. A little too watery and it's not going to clean the corn. A little too much, you'll end up burning the corn, which seems sort of strange because how can you burn ashes? But believe me, you can do it. So now the pot's on the stove and put the flame on high heat. It's always important to make sure that you stir it occasionally. And as the water gets closer to boiling point, you'll notice that the corn will start turning an orange color. Finally, after a little bit of time, we'll get our mixture to a full boil.
Right now I feel like this is getting a little bit too thick. I can tell because it's scraping on the bottom. So what I do is I'll have a little bit of boiling water boiling on the side and pour a little in. And make sure it's boiling. If you put in cold water, it's just going to have to reheat. It's going to extend the amount of time that you actually have to let it boil. It's getting pretty close to the 30 minutes and the consistency of this is really thick. I'm not going to add any more water to it. Now we're ready to take it off the stove and strain out all the ashes. And because this is such a thick mixture, I'm going to have to strain out a little bit at a time. Now you turn on the cold water and you allow all the uh, ashes to sift through the colander. So once the ashes are strained out, you'll notice that the corn has actually changed in appearance. The hull has actually turned black. And that's the part that needs to be removed from the corn. It's not digestible. They probably make good roughage, but you don't want to eat it. Once you sifted all of the ash out of the corn and the water runs clear, uh, we need to put it back on the stove and have it boil again for 10 minutes. What this does is that it makes the corn expand and actually sort of breaks itself away from the hull, which makes the process of uh, removing the hull a lot more easier. Remove from the stove and put in the colander. This is the most time consuming process. So what you do is you fill a bowl with water with the corn and then you just rub the corn together. The corn hasn't cooked enough for it to fall apart. And what the object is is to get the hulls as you see them floating in the water to get them to come off the corn. As you notice, the hull is coming off from the corn quite easily. And we can attribute that to the nice hard boil uh, that we had with the ash, corn, and water mixture process. And so this process continues in each batch that you, that you put aside. For each batch that you do, you have to do the same process. And believe me, your shoulders get tired from being hunched over. When my grandmother was a little girl, what they used to use was baskets. And when they would go to the river and, and clean the corn, the hulls would actually fall through the slats of the basket. So that made things a lot easier. Because the way that I'm doing it right now, you have to fill it with water and then you have to keep pouring it out from the top. So chances are I've touched every single kernel that's in the soup. And here's mid-process you'll see a lot of them don't have the hulls on it and some of them do. So what you really need to do is pick up the ones that you see that have a hull on it yet and kind of flick it off with your fingernail. And some of them are stubborn. So then you go back and you do the same process over again with each batch. And like I said, it can take a long time. What I've prepared here is a quart and a half. If you have Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner or some other special occasion and you do two quarts, believe me, it takes a long time.
And finally, after hours and hours and hours of cleaning, uh, you get your final reward. And this is what it looks like when, when it's clean. It's not going to be 100% hull free. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the corn in its beginning and ending stages. On the left is our corn as it was when we began, and on the right is the corn after we finish cleaning. Another ingredient in corn soup is salt pork. And the first thing we'll do is remove the rind. And then the next step we need to do is slice up the salt pork into small cubes. And the salt pork gives it a nice flavor a nice uh, pig flavor. <laughs> and our third ingredient in corn soup is kidney beans. And I'm cheating here. You're supposed to use dried kidney beans. The night before you prepare your soup, you place the beans in water and you allow them to soak. Place those beans in with your soup and you have to coordinate them so your your kidney beans are finished cooking at the same time your soup is. But due to time constraints, I use canned kidney beans. So now we're ready to make the soup. And we'll put in our corn first. All our hard work cleaning off all those hulls. Feels good. And next we put in the salt pork. And then I put in the kidney bean water the kidney bean juice. I say that's my secret ingredient. It kind of gives it its nice uh, color. But I don't know if that's scientific. And then um, you add water. And this is going to need to boil for three or four hours. And as you notice here, I'm, I'm using bottled water. I don't want anybody to think I'm using New York City tap water. And since this is going to boil for three or four hours, it's okay to put a, you don't have to worry about the corn and water consistency. You want to be able to put it on high flame and just let it boil. After your soup has been boiling for two and a half hours to three and a half hours, uh, you can check the corn and when it's done all you do is add your kidney beans and like I said I cheated I used canned kidney beans um, put them in the pot and in five minutes you're ready to serve your delicious traditional corn soup <laughs> How do you say corn soup in, um... Oh, yeah. How do you say it? Hanokwa. Hanokwa? Hanokwa. I hardly know ya. Hanokwa. 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 Good. <laughs> What'd you think of the presentation? I love the presentation. It was very detailed. <laughs> Lots of work. I like the tradition behind it. New York, New York City. It depends. I need ocean. Um, flour, teaspoon of uh, really good. Yeah. baking powder, and salt. Mm. Mm. And some 
water and, and I uh, cup tell the camera and a half of water <laughs> milk. <laughs> So they have the same material so there. Mix up all your dry ingredients and you make a well in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you pour it in the middle and then you just spin it around. So what did you think of the soup? Yeah, we tried it yet. Mm -hmm. What did you think of the soup? I haven't tried it yet either. <laughs> it should be good. Usually it's... it's really soft. Like it's a nice kind of soft dental. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Boy, what did you think of the presentation? Oh, it looked great. I want to see what you do with the, what he does with the tape when it's edited. And dubbed? Of and course dubbed. dubbed. Over. And I thought the whole presentation was very interesting because I've been waiting for over a year for the soup. It's longer than that. It's yeah. been longer than that. And how do you... For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's what did you think of the presenta presentation? Man's ready for a cable television show. It's got, you know, it was, it was nice to see it. Instead of just having to present it, to see what went into it. And see the labor, the labor of love that is taken off all the little black holes.